Good evening, I am Jack Fujii and welcome to the first session of Agriculture 194X, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And we also come to you by way of the Hawaii Interactive Television System and your local community service channel. For those of you joining us for the first time, Focus on Agriculture is a course to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture in the state of Hawaii. But uh, since the cooking classes have been so popular, we've uh, repeated the cooking class again this semester, where we will be featuring uh, various chefs and cooks uh, from the uh, Hilo area. And they will prepare various dishes for you, emphasizing local agricultural products. Before I go on, I'd like to make a few announcements. And uh, if I could have the Elmo, the first thing I'd like to go over uh, are the course requirements. OK, the grading procedure for this class is based on the number of lecture notes that are submitted. And if you submit uh, 14 to 15 uh, lecture notes plus a recipe, local, we'll, we'll talk about this recipe later on, you receive an A. If you have 12 to 13 lecture notes plus your recipe, uh, you'll receive a B. 10 to 11 plus the recipe is C, and so forth. Okay. Now, you must also submit a local original recipe. Okay. And if this recipe is not submitted by April 5th, that's April 5th, your grade will be lowered one grade level. So make sure that, uh, you, res uh, that you submit your local uh, original recipe by April 5th. It has to be in my office by April 5th, OK? Now, in terms of uh, the lecture notes uh, requirements, uh, I would like to write, uh, have you write your lecture notes in a composition book, if possible. Uh, it makes it nice and compact and uh, easy to uh, look at the end of the semester. And make sure that your name is on the uh, composition book, because last semester I received one book that didn't have a name on it, and um, I couldn't give out a grade. Okay, And then uh, for each lecture session, Make sure that you write the date of the lecture and who made the presentation, OK? And then I would like you to put a tab on the, uh, on the lecture notes so I can flip the tabs over to each lecture session. Do you understand what I mean? You can get uh, uh, you know, those little notepads uh, with the sticker on it, cut them in half, and just tab them on here so because I have to go over about a hundred of these at the end of the semester it makes it easy for me to uh, see each lecture session okay now the lecture notes are due in my office by May the 6th okay lecture notes are due in my office by May the 6th if I don't receive the lecture notes by May the 6th you'll get an incomplete okay and then you can turn in your lecture notes later, and I'll uh, change a grade. <coughs> OK, what about the local recipe requirement? OK, one, the, the recipe must be original, and it should be local. OK. Now, some people have been copying a recipe out of a recipe book and submitting it. OK. We want you to submit a local original recipe, OK? Now, if you're going to copy something out of a book, at least give the person credit, OK? So if you're going to copy a recipe out of a book, make sure you cite that book that you got the recipe out of, OK? And now, as I said earlier, the notes are due in my office on Friday, April 5th, 
Okay, now if I don't have your notes or your recipe in by Friday, April 5th, uh, no matter what you do, your grade's going to be lowered by one grade, okay? Now, if you have to get a hold of me, there are several ways that you can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of me by snail mail at 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720. Oh, I made a mistake here, 96720. Okay, uh, you can address it to me, UH Hilo, College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, or CAFNARM. You can get a hold of me by phone at 808-933-0850. And if I'm not in, you can leave a message on my code of phone. You can also get a hold of me by fax at 808-974-7674. Or if you are on email, you can email me at jfuji at hawaii.edu. Okay. Now, if there are some uh, people out in the community that would like to register for the class, uh, I've asked the registrar to see if we could extend the registration date to the 25th. I believe that's not this Friday, but the following Friday. So if you want, if, for those of you out in the viewing audience, if you'd like to sign up for this class, you can write to me and I'll send you the registration forms. The tuition fee for one credit is $63. You make the check out to UH Hilo and then send the, the whole registration packet in to me and we'll get you registered, but I believe I have to get it in. Uh, you have to get the registration packet into my office by the 25th of January, okay? Uh, while I'm also talking about uh, uh, or have this moment, I'd like to say a few words about the College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management. Uh, we have an excellent animal science program uh, with a pre-veterinary medicine program. For those of you who are interested in going into pre-veterinary medicine, we have an excellent pre-veterinary medicine program and also a production option in animal science. For those uh, who are interested in the business aspect of agriculture, we have a specialization in agribusiness. We also have a specialization in agroecology and environmental quality. We also have a program in aquaculture, okay? And also in crop protection. And for those of you who are not too sure uh, what area of agriculture to go into. We have a general agriculture specialization and finally a tropical horticulture specialization. Also, I'd like to say uh, thank all the uh, people who uh, purchased our cookbook from the last semester. Uh, I wanna thank you very much. And of course, I wanna also say Happy New Year to all of our uh, viewers out there and thank you for watching. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience, and of course those of you here in the studio, can call in and ask questions of our guests. So uh, that will happen approximately at 8 o'clock, so jot down your questions and give us a call after the, uh, at approximately 8 p.m. We have another very interesting presentation for you this evening. Uh, this evening, we are featuring J&J uh, &J Auto Repair. So owners are uh, Laura and James Fujimoto. And uh, they were so kind to let some of their people off today to uh, prepare a huli huli pig. And this is the way we do it on the Big Island. And, uh, you're going to learn how to do uh, huli huli pig, big island uh, style. And uh, also we have uh, with us uh, Sean's muffler and brakes. Uh, so I'd like to introduce the people here uh, this evening. Uh, first of all, we have Derek Nakamoto. Derek, maybe you might wave to the people out there. Derek is a refinishing uh, technician over there at J&J &J Auto Repair. And we have Wesley Masuda. Wesley is uh, the auto mechanic over there at J&J. &J. And we also have Jason Hara. Jason is the shop foreman, the body shop foreman at J&J. &J. 
And we have Sean Nakamoto of Sean's, with a Z, I understand, Sean's Muffler and Brakes. Now, these, uh, these people here are experts at uh, uh, doing Huli Huli Pig, and uh, we've got a good video of the uh, Huli Huli Pig, and uh, I'm going to turn the class over to uh, Derek, and uh, we can start our class. So, Derek, uh, what are we going to do tonight? Okay, tonight we're going to do some huli huli pig and beef. So uh, there's probably many ways of doing it. And um, <clears throat> how we do it is we use plates or we use like forks or other gadgets for lock them in place. But most of all, we use plates for locking these long rods. That's the way we were taught from the white male guys. And also, um, seasoning the pig. So maybe we got a videotape, right, Jason? Uh, yeah. uh, Derek, uh, maybe what we can do is uh, turn the video on and then, uh, because it shows all of that, I think, in the video, and then maybe you can narrate the, the video. Yeah. So maybe we can roll the tape. Okay. So uh, while we're waiting for the tape to, there we go. Okay, so what's happening? Right now is, well, we're supposed to stop the fire by now already before we even hook up the pig. But since he was walking behind time. We, we got a shot of the, uh, the fire going, but. Uh, yeah. And right now is just setting up, showing some of the equipment, the rods, the plates. It's our cutting board. So how long have you been doing this huli huli, uh, Since Derek? the early 90s, but actually from mid 80s, when we, when we hunt with the ranch guys, they don't want to show us about how to huli huli pig and beef and whatnot for their parties and whatnot, yeah. So, so I understand you folks did about uh, five of them already this year. Yeah, this month we did five. This is the fifth one right now, tonight's one. The presentation one and this one right here was from the end of the year one we made for and we just right now we're just alcoholing the rods for we'll clean all the rods get them all clean and uh getting them prepared for go through the plates so you learned this from uh the people out in waimea the parker ranch guys then what are you doing now Right now we um, cutting slits in the, the hind quarter so it will cook faster. Oh, so you have to put yeah. slices in you there. Oh, I see. Because it's kind of too, the meat is just chunky, yeah. So the front quarter, the back quarter, and uh, part of the, the spine place too. What's the best size pig for? Huli Huli Derek. I like to make like 130, yeah. under 150 pounds. That's that would be the best. That's a pretty good sized pig. It doesn't take that long for a cook, but if you go too big, then you need a lot of firewood, and then you're going to need enough height and heat for and hours for cooking, I guess. That thing. So what are you doing over there? Derek? Right now we're salting up the cavity. Now is that Hawaiian salt that you're no, using? It's just regular Martin salt or we buy them about a five pound bags and stuff. So, so what's the difference between using Hawaiian salt versus uh, regular it, table salt? The table salt dissolves so faster, yeah, when the thing is spinning on the rod. So I guess the drippings that come out gets clearer and clearer, not bloody and then clearer and clearer at the end, yeah. So you can tell when it's really fully cooked, yeah. So but you prefer using the uh, regular table salt versus uh, Hawaiian salt? Yeah. I guess when you start eating the uh, huli huli pork, you might uh, crunch your way through a big piece of Hawaiian <laughs> salt there, and it might be kind of salty, yeah, so. Well, right now, they're trying to push the rod in to get it at the exact spot, so we can center that pig on that, the main shaft. Now, all of this is, is made of stainless steel, correct? Correct. The rod, the plates, the spears. 
usually if the pig's in a reef for a long time, it gets kind of stiff. So I guess we're getting kind of problems right there right now <laughs> with him. But as a whole, the, the rod should go right through pretty easy. So you have a whole gang of people that uh, uh, help you out in this huli huli. This day, we're supposed to have at least a dozen or to 15 guys over there, but I guess they was kind of shy about the camera, so they never show up. I don't know why people are shy about the camera, even in this classroom, you know. We if, put the if you come on a normal day, we might have at least 30 or more guys that over my house. Yeah, it looks like you only have the four standby <laughs> here, people that uh, do all the hard work, yeah. And so right now, we're just sewing up the cavity so that um, I just seal the juice inside, yeah. So it won't be that dry, yeah, when you, I guess it's going to be rolling, yeah, for hours and hours. So is that a special needle that you made to yeah. uh, do the sewing there? Or? Actually, my friend showed me that big needle because we used to have the short ones, yeah, like three to four inches. But your hands get all oily yeah, at the same time. So what he does is, we made them at least one foot long and thicker, like 316 stainless. We made our own needles. And it's faster. Because some other part, if you know, the skin is real thick and hard to puncture the, the so, fat. So uh, what, what do you folks do over there at J&J? &J? We do painting cars. We do. Uh, Mechanic work. Actually, we do bumper to bumper, actually. And I also, uh, we have, of course, uh, Sean's uh, muffler and brakes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Sean, uh, where's, your, where's your shop located? I'm in the industrial area on Holomore Street. Uh-huh. Um, and just open the body here. Go to Holomore Street and then open the body And you just specialize in uh, yeah, mufflers? and. brakes, front end work. I see. Not <laughs> oh, okay. So I know he can. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, where is this J and J located, uh, Derek? Um, so what's the address? Eight forty-five Iolani Street. Eight forty-five Iolani. Right behind the old Dells. Oh, I see. Okay. Next to Maguire Bearing. <laughs> And does it, does it make a difference whether you use a commercial pig or uh, a wild pig when you do this huli huli style? Yeah, I prefer like commercial pig. Unless if it's a wild pig, it's got to be like in a pen, not, can, not in a wild. You got to shoot them and, you know, dehair them and clean them and get them prepared. It takes a time, yeah. Taste-wise? Uh, yeah, maybe it tastes a little bit different. So, okay. of course, raise them is better. These these pigs are all uh, commercially uh, raised. Raised, I think this one came from the university farm, uh, courtesy of Arnold. <laughs> and uh, he does a good job, Arnold. So, what else can you uh, put on this uh, rod for? We tried meat? chicken. We did turkeys. We did. Um, Goat, hind quarters on one goat, sheep, hind quarters on sheep. But the best thing for put on is beef and pig. Park is the best for go on. But this pig right here is on is on board right here, so the the back side is like the cut is bigger, yeah. The incision would have been smaller if it was on female pig. Then you also what's that? Sewing up the Yeah, the neck. The neck area. But the neck <coughs> is real thick, yeah. This is the hardest part of the pig, actually. Sometimes you just gotta make some ice pick holes and kind of find the hole with the needle. So we're trying to squeeze it close there right now. But this ice pig is a perfect pig for holy holy. But how much would you say that pig weighs? That dressed pig, out. I would say about 80, 90 pounds. Do you think there's a, a, a difference between uh, huli huli pig and uh, cooking the uh, kalua pig in the emu? Yeah, kalua get a different taste. 
It tastes almost the same, but the emu get the steam, yeah? And they can do more, like, more poundage inside them. So if we got a bigger party, instead of huli huli, we asked one of our good friends for um, even want some pork and turkey, pork butts. He do ham. He does all kinds, this guy. So uh, Derek uh, and, your, and your group, do, do you do this for other people? We do it for good friends. Oh, but so what, uh, what's a good friend? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Most guys come see us for doing. Every month we get at least one or two. Last year we probably did about, I would say our fan maybe nine, maybe ten. So how much uh, advanced time do, do they have to give you? Like if I wanted to have a party with a huli huli pig, how much advanced notice do I have to give you? At least a month in advance. At least a month. Now what are you doing? Right now, we're putting on the plates for center the pig so that we can um, lock them in place with the rods, yeah? So the pig won't move. It's spinning over like five, six hours. So Wesley's locking it right now in place. So you fabricated this uh, entire uh, huli huli machine? Huh? Yeah, we made this whole machine. I had some help. And then I copied one of my good friends in Waimea, got in Lindsay who helped, you know, set me up and then s told me what not for do and what for do so that I wouldn't make the same mistakes I guess they made. And then we just prefab the whole thing. And we made another machine after that, a smaller one for do a weekend kind of hibachis. I guess the, the hard part is just setting up the pig yeah. like this and making the fire and, yeah. and getting the firewood, yeah? And after that, it's duck soup. Huh? <laughs> Goes on pretty easy. But the first time we did them, we need help on Maxi uh, Kabilizan. He's one of the ranch guys that live out in Waimea and work for Parker Ranch. He comes out and show us how to hook them up all the way from Waimea and uh, set us up. So if I were to make one of these uh, huli huli machines, how much do you think it would cost me? I would say, with all the additions we did on this machine, uh, maybe about under 2000 I guess. So it's a stainless steel that's very yeah. expensive, huh? The sheets and the pans and whatnot, we made, the rods. Because we got two sets, two sets of everything, two sets of rods, and we got a longer set like how we did you folks one with the two pigs one time instead of doing one. But if you get these rods crooked from the start and the thing starts to sag or move around, kind of hard to um, reset the pig once it's on already. So the end plate should have a lot of holes uh, on yeah. there so you can position the rod yeah. almost any, any position, right? There's probably about 50 holes maybe on that one. And then working with stainless steel is uh, real difficult, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you really can't drill those things out. You, you have you to have punch a heavy em. press and punch them out. Is that? That's correct. We tried drilling some, but there's a couple of different types of stainless steel. The soft one and a little harder one. So one of these, uh, the rod, what's the diameter of the, the main shaft? The main shaft is inch and a quarter, and the uh, small spears on the outside is half inch. And all? All stainless, stainless steel. steel. We got tree eights, we got quarter inch rods for do the chicken and so forth. But right now we just Trying to see if the pig is centered real good. We don't want to make no mistakes because once it's <laughs> on the fire, it's on. that's it, huh? You kind of move it. It falls already. in, it falls <laughs> in. Just too bad, yeah? Okay. So right now, that last plate that Sean's putting on is the lock. Oh, so the rods will yeah, push out. Yeah, so the out. rods will push out. But later in the show, I'm going to show them how we used to use these other locks from the front, yeah? 
need to say this whole unit costs about yeah. two two k. With this this one ain't so bad. It's the other one in the pans we made. Oh, the 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 pig tray yeah, and the everything. Trays. Oh, okay, okay. And we'll the see that later on in the uh, video, I think. And the shafts. See, right now, actually, we're working backwards. We're supposed to have started the fire before we hooked up the pig, so the wood would be all like coals by now. So, what is that you're using to start the fire? It's just a torch from a big tree you can get them from, or gas bro. Oh, that's oh, that's the thing yes. you torch the weeds with. Yes, a weed oh. kill. But you it's don't real fool fast, around, do you? And what kind of wood is best? That for? wood right there that you're looking at is mamani. Every year we make a trip, go up Mauna Kea, and we um, do some firewood cutting on their ranch. What about ohi? Uh, ohi is good too. And uh, we use kiawe too, but kiawe is like hard to get, yeah. It's like pokey and thorny, and it's real humbug to go through and get them. I'd rather use Momani. It burns fast and it, it burns down to ash and the, and the heat is real hot. So right now we're just kind of getting that fire going with that power cat, that fan. So it's, it's not too good to use charcoal mm. when you're making this huli I better. I've seen guys using charcoal, but in our case, I think we're going to need about a truckload of charcoal. I think we'll cook. <laughs> Over the years will go on. So, so it takes about what? How many hours to this pig that we cooked? Just about five and a half to six hours. It was like 80, 80 something pounds, with the right height, the right heat, and if it's not too windy, because the wind probably holds back, push the heat away for us. And right now we're just finding the height so the legs won't hit the barrels or go in the fire. So those are just 50 gallon drums that you yeah. cut in half for the fire. For the fire. Oh. You see how good these guys, they know how already. Nobody needs to say already. They know how to do them. You got them trained good, Derek. Right now, we just put it on the universal for the extension so the fire can stay two to the front and then the motor is more on the backside, yeah, so the motor won't get as hot. Oh, this saves cranking it by hand, yeah. huh? Yeah. I heard of guys cranking, but I never did see anybody using the steering wheel or cranking it by hand. Boy, if you had to crank that thing all day, <laughs> boy, you be knocked out at the end of the day. You won't be able to eat the pig, I think. After one hour, that, that's kind of hard. Right now, what Wesley's doing is he's oiling the pig right now. We're going to seal the pig in. So, so what's the purpose of spraying the oil on there? Just to seal the pig, uh -huh. get it all wet. It's just like frying a steak or chicken, yeah? So it won't burn the skin. That's protecting the skin right now. And it makes a nice color after an hour or so. So this is the way we do it on the big island, yeah. right? Actually, we're doing the lazy way. We're supposed to go with our hands, pour them on top. <laughs> but you get a good coat of oil on it. It should pretty hold out through the whole time you roll it. So what's the biggest... Uh, uh, pig that you put on one of these? Uh, the biggest <coughs> pig we put on is maybe about maybe 190, just under 200. Wow, that's a what you're doing now? Right now we're just kind of, it's bubbling the skin. It's like blistering, so you just take out the air so it won't travel as far as the skin goes, yeah. So if you take out the air out of the, the skin right now, it will it just sit back inside. You know, don't rip. So now you can sit down and relax and talk story, yeah? Yeah. But this day, I don't think it's relaxing too much this day. 
this is I think this is like one hour, I guess. Well, the wind was picking up yet at the. So we had to what is that? Uh, we had roof iron. We had to take out roof iron and kind of block so that the heat wouldn't run away. Oh, I see. It, too much heat run away, gonna take longer to cook. But right now it's like at least two or three hours already in the cook, I think already. Because the feet is all off already. Oh, so the legs kind of, yeah. I guess it cooks fast and then yeah. they kind of fall off or you pick them off or what? Yeah, we take them off because it's just going to dangle right down, yeah. And in the show, we're going to show you guys what we do with the feet and the bones and we're going to make one soup. <laughs> Oh, sounds good. On pig feet soup. And what do you do with the head? Well, the head, uh, whoever wants. Or okay. Right oh, now, so they're getting ready for takeoff. With the wet rags, you got to wet the rags because the rod is very, very hot. But everybody knows their job. They know what to do already. They did them so much times already, this thing. Mm, that looks good. The skin is the real good part, right? That's the nice best part. Crunchy. When it first comes off, the skin is the best. Ah, oh, it tastes good, <laughs> but bad for the health. <laughs> But I guess you don't do this that often, so you can splurge and <laughs> eat the skin. There's soft parts of the skin, they're crunchy parts. The crunchy part is the better part of the skin. Hopefully we get ours on inside. The presentation is like crispy. So now it's just the reverse process of yeah. taking everything off. Huh? So you did five of these already, this. Today was the fifth one we did. So we have one ready to go for the class tonight. Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> get ready to eat tonight. I hope they eat their best tonight. <laughs> I told them to make a whole pot of rice. The soup, the pig, and the beef we're going to try to cook tonight. Should be pretty much planning for eat. Okay, now the main shaft is... Yeah, the main shaft got to come off because it's real, real hot. And right now, the shaft is coming out, yeah. That rod is pretty heavy, too. Yeah, that rod is at least 50 pounds. Right. Those are pretty neat little... Uh, what is that, claws yeah. or something that you We got? just made that claws for, well, we just didn't finish this claws for this show right now. <laughs> it was always in the side. We just hold them off, hold them off, and then finally just. Oh, that's a, that's a good move. Well, if you had to touch that, uh, that's super hot, no? Yeah. Well, I think the smell, the, the people <laughs> can smell it in, in the classroom right now. And so you just shred it just like just that. Just shred them. Either you can shred them or you can cut them or you can presentation just whole. We did for parties like the whole pig. But after, you know, 10 guys go in the line, you kind of really tell what that pig looked like already. So might as well just shred them from the beginning. You put the apple in the mouth too? Oh, okay, no, we don't want an apple in the mouth, but so whenever they try that. So now uh, we're going to have another video, right? You said yeah. Uh, <coughs> and, and this next video, you're going to do a hind quarter of a beef, right? Yeah. So uh, where, where do you get the hind quarter from to do this? Well, usually I get the hind quarters from either friends or Brady at Kulana Foods. Last minute, always Brady bails me out of something. So he helps me out a lot, Brady. <coughs> So Even as, as soon as the video is ready, we'll just uh, roll the video. But uh, in the meantime, why don't you just go ahead and, okay, there we go. What you doing? 
Right now, we're just trying to center the rod on one side of that hind quarter, yeah. So it takes off a lot of weight off the, the motor, yeah. So it is using much torque, yeah, on the one side. Because if you get them as center as can, the motor will spin freely, like, with no hesitation. And how much did you say that hind quarter cost? That hind quarter right there was, I'm not too sure how much it cost, but I know the pound it was like under 50 pounds, that one. 50 pounds, yeah. boy, you can have a party with that, yeah. huh? We yeah. do, for Sean's grand opening, we did two hind quarters. I think one was, the two of them was like 70, 70 pounds each. Nobody's gonna say, where's the beef when you guys do this, huh? They tried their best for eating all that, they couldn't do it. We had plenty left over that day. Now what are you doing? Right now we're putting in the forks for secure the hind. And you made all of these yourself, huh? Yeah, I, I had some help. I had asked a lot of help from plenty of friends. These guys behind me, Neil and Abel. I had like Mako Ishii, Jimmy's Radiator, Rock, and Maxi, and the Lindsay's helped me in my meal. And you just bolt them down tight. Huh? Yeah. What happens? Uh, doesn't that uh, beef shrink when it's cooking? Yeah, it will shrink. But the beef takes, like, way longer than a pig to cook, so... As you go, you gotta cut, and then you gotta re-season them and cut again, then re-season again with the oil. Basically, it's just salt and water and garlic that we, um... So th this was actually for your New Year's party, right? Yeah, we had this party. Oh, you folks don't fool around when you have a party. Our Super Bowl party probably gonna be more. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so you're gonna have a Super Bowl party, yeah. right? That party should be more. Who are you rooting for? Or, or that, they don't know they yet don't who's going to be in the Super Bowl yet. Yeah. Yeah? But every year we do a good one on the Super Bowl. Now what, what's he, what are they spraying there? Right now, that's the um, salt and garlic water. Okay, and you gave us the recipe of yeah, that. It's and that's in there. Inside our, it's it's going to be in our cookbook, right? Yeah, roughly about two cups salt two cups of um, blended garlic and four cups of water, I think, to a, to a boil. Now you marinate this yeah. uh, hind quarter and you also cut it, right? Yeah, and we just... You stuff it with... With some smashed garlic we put inside so the flavor is, stays inside, yeah. Oh, so that's the secret to... Uh, it's real thick, yeah, that'd be... But garlic and salt, and the oil is seasoning that thing. It's real good. Really good down. Wow, I'm getting hungry just <laughs> watching that. I don't know how many hours this is, but probably about three hours already went on. Well, it looks like it's getting pretty well cooked on the outside. Mm. So how many people do you think that would serve? At one party, I would say maybe a couple hundred with that park on the side too. Oh, so you just cut the, the outer cooked yeah. area. Because the inside is a little raw still yet if you can see. But some people like it really rare. Some people like it really well done. Wow, that's a lot of beef. We had that beef on the almost the whole night to 11, I think, that night. You just slice it off slice as you it, go. Yeah, there we go. Now, when you cut it like that, are you going to lose all the oil? Or? Yeah, you're going to lose the seasoning, so you got to reseal it. You know, with the okay. salt, the garlic, and the water that you spray on, and then just oil it up again. 
Oh, okay. Just for sealing now, the juice. You also had uh, sashimi and poke, right? Yeah, we okay. did some. You want to show them uh, uh, you uh, filleting the uh, ahi? Good, like, see, yeah. Okay. okay. And then also at the ending part of that video, I think you're you're going to show them uh, how to make poke, yeah? your style of uh, making poke. Yeah. So I guess we'll just let that video roll when the time comes. Um, but the poke, we don't want no rest. So who's the fisherman that. of this group? It's Wesley Masuda. <laughs> oh, Wesley back there, he's a fisherman. Huh? He's a fisherman. He and supplies me with all the fish. And you had two big ahi for New Year's. Boy, that was a good catch, eh, Wesley? Yeah. <laughs> I got it during uh, New Year's time. Did you have trouble uh, catching the fish or? No. No was, problem. Yeah, it was good. Oh, must was be good. A, must be an ace fisherman. <laughs> He maybe catch one, all the fish. Maybe one day we ought to do a, a, a go out in the boat and uh, videotape you catching the fish and uh, show us how to do some uh, cooking with the fish. Sure, anytime. Okay. <laughs> then we can do the poke. <laughs> we can do the presentation with the poke on okay. hand. And show us how you get the sashimi and yeah. everything. Huh? Because that Saturday I was going to buy one fish. Then they called me and they said they got one. While he was talking to me on the phone, he had another striker on top that day. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a special way to cut the fillet, the uh, the the quarters of the uh, ahi, and there's a special part that you use for the sashimi, right? Yeah. And then the uh, the more the junk part, you we fry it or something. We fry the the junk places and the good places really for sashimi and the poke one. We just mix them all up. Okay. How's our video? Are we about ready to go? I think the video should be coming up pretty soon. Oh, wow, there you go. How many pounds was that? That is about 35 pounds. 35? Yeah. Now, is, is it uh, the, bigger the, the bigger the fish, the better the sashimi is? Oh, that? yeah, the yeah. bigger the fish, the better. The tasting of the fish and the color. And, and uh, what's the best, there's all different kinds of uh, tuna, right? The, the ahi and... This is yellow fin. Yeah. Yeah, tombo ahi, now blue what, fin. What's a tombo ahi? Tombo ahi is um, it's not albacore, but it's more white meat, uh, a little whiter, pink. And, and that's mm. better for frying than making sashimi? Yeah, you can make poke. Oh, better. I see. Is it more oily or something? It's oilier, yeah. Okay, what are you doing now? Derek. Right now, we're trying to fillet it. I should get in some trouble right now. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I'm not like that, so. But just quartering them, filleting them, get them to the, um, the center bone. So you just run the knife uh, yeah, against the, the, knife. the bone, huh? Yeah. That size fish was, I don't know, that fish was just giving me some trouble that day. Because probably the camera was so close to me <laughs> that I, <laughs> I was getting a hard time. But usually, I don't have no trouble with that fish. The bigger, the better. So how long did it take you to land that fish there, uh, Wesley? Um, <coughs> we use hand line, so maybe about a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah. We can Do get you it in have the one of those automatic reels that Reels um, yeah, but we don't use reels on this type. This is um, hand line. And, and what do you use for bait? Um, opelu. Yeah, maybe what we ought to do, uh, promote the, the fishing industry and uh, yeah. do one focus nag on, uh, on how to catch the fish and then how to prepare it uh, for the dinner table. Huh? That yeah. would be good. <laughs> okay. Him and his friend Dwayne can go on. And they can <laughs> well, actually, later on the semester, we're going to have your friend who's the uh, president of the Big Island yeah. Bird Hunting Club, and uh, they're going to come on and do some cooking uh, with, uh, I guess, the fowl, right? Yeah, the bird club guys should be coming yeah. on. It's Steve, Steve Hurt. So maybe uh, we can do one on fishing and how to steam the... Like, what are those red fish? Onaga, opaka-paka, and... Yeah. Ehu, no? Can you catch those things? Sure. 
Okay. <laughs> He's on ax for these guys. Oh. He's just shy right now. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get all those different kinds of fish and we'll show the people how to not only catch it, but also how to prepare it for the dinner table. Yeah. Does that sound good? That sounds okay. real good. And then we'll be able to try the fish out too on the, prog uh, on the class, right? Okay. Steam pocket is the best eating fish for steam. So this is the basic way you do it is to just uh, cut it, it into quarters, yeah. huh? It's kind of easier. So are there different methods of, of uh, fishing for ahi, uh, Wesley? Yeah, there's lots of different ways. What, what do you um, think is the best way? Well, they go ikashibi nighttime, and then it's hand line, but they just drifting out there, and then they put this palo, this like small pieces of bait in the water mm -hmm. to call the fish to them. What do, you, what do you use for the palo? Um, the anchovies, frozen anchovies and stuff, yeah. How and it calls the fish to the boat. This year alone, last year alone, how much ahis you guys caught in Marlins? Oh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> Had a <our> share. <laughs> so do you also, so you catch marlin and, and what do you do with the marlin? Do um, you eat the marlin also? Or? Yeah, you make poke and you can fry it. I see. There's a lot of fish to go around to for everybody. So once you quarter it, then what? Then, um, then, then what do you do? I guess we go and like take off the skin, take off the dark meat, and then what we're gonna do is just like take off the junk parts, keep the good parts for sashimi, and then the junk parts we just cut them up, either fry them or we just throw them in our poke. So the dark part of the fish, is that good to eat or? Yeah, some people like to eat it. Some people doesn't like, but I just keep them on the side and I fry them and then we just probably eat around the dark meat. And then you also make the soup out yeah. of the fish head? We make soup, but that day we had too much going that day. <laughs> <laughs> so when we do the, when we do the, uh, the fish class, then you'll We'll make one. You'll show us how to make the fish soup and the whole works. The okay. poke, the steamed fish. Right now, we're just taking off the dark side of the meat. That. Then you just section them section like that. Well. So we can get them for the sashimi and the poke. Boy, you, you folks have it made for parties, right? You got a fisherman for the sashimi and got the huli huli <laughs> thing. You're just just ready made for parties. And then we get the bakers that bake the, the goodies for us, the cakes, cookies. Homemade kind. Homemade kind. Maybe you might share the recipes with us. <laughs> you can put them in the cookbook. I can name you a lot of names, but Maybe I better not right now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the dark part. It's the dark uh, part of the fish. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, now? right now we salting the poke right now. Okay. So you just kinda salt it yeah. to flavor to and flavor. Uh, just like salting one steak or chicken. So, so what kind of salt do you use? Hawaiian salt I usually use well, on Hawaiian poke, salt yeah. for this one? Yeah. Okay. Because it kind of like release itself out, yeah, afterwards. So you just salt it to taste? Salt to taste. Okay. Well, we just gauge them by the pound. I don't know how much pounds was in that tray right there, but... And then what is that? That's garlic, uh, ginger. Oh, you're shredding the shredding ginger? Shredding ginger on top. Mm. You can put a little garlic on too. So when you do this, it's all just eyeball, right? Yeah. We just, so what I'll amount of fish so you the get. The main thing you know, have to know is the ingredients, like one is salt. Yeah. Second is grated ginger. Yeah. Okay. Then you just mix it and up. You just mix them. 
And then you can throw... Well, we like onions inside ours, but... What is that? That right there is like 10 chili peppers, I think, <laughs> dried chili peppers inside. That's on the hot, hot side, stuff, yeah. Huh? How, how do you get that chili powder? Well, these, my friend guys, West guys make them for me. Yeah. They dehydrate them and they osterize them to real fine. Mm -hmm. And that way it stays longer in the icebox. Instead of going on a tree and picking every time that we make poke. So now what is that? That you is... Onion? Yeah, onions going inside right now. And mm -hmm. that is Ogo. Or Inamono? Yeah. Oh, that was Inamono. And now this is the Ogo then. Inamono, that's... Yeah. Uh, Kukuina. Toasted Kukuina? Yeah. And then the Ogo. Gives so those are the basic yeah. ingredients, huh? And then at the end, if you can add some shoyu on top. So I try to hold back on the salt in the beginning because you can always fix it with shoyu or you, know, you can put some more salt on top. And those are the ingredients for your yeah. Derek uh, <laughs> Gang's... Uh, poke. Poke, huh? Yeah. Okay. And I think that's it. Now what are we going to do now, uh, okay. Derek? You wanna right now we're going to demonstrate how we hook up the plates and the rods since they saw it on the TV. And okay. uh, I guess... Maybe you can show up put the put the stuff on the counter so yeah. the camera can really get a close up of okay. it. First of all, this is our plates that we use. Two plates and this is the locking plate. Okay. And then if you don't have a locking plate, you can lock your rods with these locks right here. Okay, I guess the overhead okay. camera can zoom in on that. Yeah. And then for the beef, this is what we use for our beef. And you uh, fabricated all of that? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're having we fabricate. Okay. And I guess. Thermometer. That's our thermometer. So, so what should the, the uh, temperature be when the beef is cooked? The beef is supposed to be... Or the pork? The pork is 170. And the beef is 160 to 140, yeah. Okay. But the... And then maybe you can show the, the rods there, both ends yeah. of the rod. Let me show them the spears first. So one end of the rod is like a T, yeah? Yeah. That's going to lock it, yeah. And then how, how do you get that real sharpened point? Uh, this right here. Yeah. If uh, you got a metal late, you know, that the chuck is half inch, you can just chuck it and, you know, oh, scribe so you it down. you have to have a, a machine shop. Then. Yeah. If you get some skills that you can do, like welding and metal late and... And then what about that, the big center rod? This rod right here, on this corner right here has a milling, it's like a keyway, yeah? If you got a milling machine, you can make that keyway. So what, what is a keyway? It's for locking the universals, the motor, the, the connections all, all in one. I see, okay. And, and then uh, what, what are these other, things you've got here. This is just like some main caps and should we get another one? That the rod goes inside. The main shaft. And this one right here is another bearing type way how we lay the rod on top. Oh but so there's two different this, ways that you yeah. can lay the rod in. And this type right here is like a Babbitt. It's like a main bearing or cap that can withstand way more heat than those bearings do. Okay. But uh, I prefer this one better than that round bearings. And then uh, this motor that you have here, what, what <coughs> kind of motor is that? Uh, that motor right there is 
The torque is 600 pounds. It's a day 10 motor and it's quarter hoss and it's six turns per minute. It practically can turn anything as long as it's straight, centered on that rod. Uh, Jason, you can show that uh, other rod that you yeah. connect the shaft with to the, no. what is that, a U joint at the end? Yeah. <clears throat> so the motor, like, you're not, the ground ain't that straight, yeah, certain places we go to, because we go on site and regular. So, we we'll go just set them up and then okay, we can spin them. I wonder if that side camera can go in there and get a close up shot of, uh, yeah. Okay. But these universals can be really, you can get them pretty much turn any angle. And this motor right here is so strong that it will turn anything that motor. <laughs> okay. But you know, I would go try to set up the rods on the um, stand. So I guess if, if someone's really seriously interested in making one of these, they could probably uh, kind of talk to you and uh, if you got some time, maybe you can... Yeah, I'm willing to, you know, show the machine. And, and maybe we'll put the, all the, uh, the material list in our cookbook. Okay. If they get some welding skills, some late... They can use metal lates and whatnot. So that that's the main shaft there, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Just slide them on, run that thing down. Yeah. The big rods. Okay. And then you're gonna put this. the okay, you're gonna put the other no. plate in. <coughs> Right now, we will just try center them. Okay, bring them more. So you can actually line up about a dozen chickens on there also <laughs> and, and do uh, a whole bunch of chickens, huh? We did about, I don't know how much chickens really, but quite a few chickens one time. Ah, I see. And we did turkeys too. Okay. As long as you base it with oil, the same way how we did the pig. It'll work the same way. And maybe we'll just do the two rods and then maybe mm -hmm. you can uh, go for the, uh, okay. the huli huli pig uh, feet uh, soup. Okay. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. well, well, well how, do you, how do you make the soup? Okay. While, while they're dismantling that or leave that there? Uh, uh, the soup is just like, what we do is, We put about So do, what 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 bones do you use for the the soup, Derek? We use the pig feet, the pig spine, the So a any bony part of yeah. the the pig. We use that's the best part of the soup. That's the flavor right there. Also, you never want to throw the bones away. No, we now throw no bones away. You make use of every part of the pig, huh? Yeah, the tail, the feet, and uh... So what are the, uh, what are the ingredients for the... The ingredients is just salt. And you boil the bones to at least about an hour or so, so the, the meat just falls off the bones and I just put daikong and cabbage and some green onion. Usually I just put color, we just put some pepinola shoots on top, but mostly we like just the daikon and the cabbage. Daikon and yeah. cabbage, huh? Yeah. Okay. So how, uh, you say you get the bones and you boil it for about one hour? 
Yeah. Until the meat falls off. Yeah, if you get them, because you like to take out all the bones yeah, out of the soup because you don't like to be scooping with the bones inside, yeah. So, so one, once, once uh, it boils and, and the meat falls off the bone, then you take the bone out. Yeah, kind of take out all the bones and just take out all the bones out of it, the soup. And then if it doesn't have enough bones on the meat, what I do is I add some more on top. I just throw a little bit more inside. So you just throw some hooli hooli meat inside yeah, there. Yeah, like a couple cups or what you call <laughs> from the bag. And you cut the cabbage real fine or? Mm, I cut it just cubes. And I cut this one. So that's about a half a head of cabbage. Yeah. But it all depends on how much you yeah. make, right? Because this, this amount right here we're making is just, just a little. So. I guess that's yeah. a kind of family style right there, huh, Derek? <laughs> that's not for the big uh, game. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we made a big pot on the side, but this is just okay. for. Demonstration? Demonstration right now. Okay. So maybe I'm just going to use half of this and half of the um, cabbage. So pretty, pretty easy so far, just the uh, daikon and the cabbage, huh? Because the, the bones have its own flavor, yeah, already inside. Okay. You do, I get this thing boiling in a, in a flash. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what else are you going to put in there? Um, just daikon and... Daikon and cabbage and some pipinola shoots. What was that again? Pipinola shoots. Just oh, for flavor. Okay, okay. What a color. And where do you get the pipinola shoots from? This one, I'm not too sure we got this Farm, one from. Farmer's Market. Maybe Farmer's Market. One. Okay. And where did you get this recipe from? This recipe was from the guys in Waimea that went show us how to cook this and prepare it. And I really liked it, so every time when they used to make pig or whatever, they used to call us in and tell us their soup again. So we used to come down and eat some soup. Because Waimea is real cold, yeah? This is the paniola style? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what you do? Um, any, uh, any other yes. ingredients you're going to put in there? Um, no, right there. That's good, right there. Now. Okay, so are you, uh, go over one more time all the different things you put in there. What we do is we put cabbage, just a little, just for that, and then a little more daikon and just some color with some pipinola shoots. And then as it goes to a boil, what we do is we just... Uh, Turn them down and just throw in the pipinola shoots with the cabbage. And, and when you're boiling the bones, what do you add to the water? Just salt? Just salt. And the bones, it will have their own flavor, just come straight out. And then that's the, the soup, uh, yeah. huli huli bone, mm -hmm. pig bone soup. Yeah. Okay. It's real thick and oily and <laughs> you going to So shall we open it up to question and answers now? Okay. Okay, good. well we've come to that uh, portion of the class where those of you in the viewing yeah. audience and of course those of you here in the classroom can uh, ask questions uh, for our guests this evening. Uh, this evening we're featuring J&J Auto Repair and Sean's Muffler and Brake Shop. Uh, we have with us this evening Derek Nakamoto, Wesley Masuda, Jason Hara, and Sean Nakamoto. And uh, so we are coming to you live this evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii Kilo campus. And uh, we just got through showing you folks how we uh, do the huli huli pig and beef uh, hindquarter uh, here on the Big Island. And I believe the numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 
Okay, we have two I'm callers, so distance. we'll take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and Just go ahead with the question, please? Yeah. Um, Hilo? Yes, and, we're, and uh, what's your question? Um, if you're throwing a party for like about 100 people, how many pounds of fists would I need to buy for that poke thing? Okay, Sean or Derek? 100 people, how much poke? <laughs> 400 people. No. Yeah. Oh, I would say at least oh. 70, 70 pounds to oh. 80 pounds. 70 pounds. Yeah. So it's better to have more than not enough, right? I would buy more because <laughs> I'm a fish eater. Okay. About 70 pounds, they say. Is that only the bones or the whole fish or just the fillet part? Just fillets. So okay. if you're going to start off with a big uh, ahi, how many pound ahi would you need to end up with 70 pound of dress weight poke? Okay, if the fish was yeah. about 110 pounds, maybe. You need at yeah. least 110 pound yeah, yeah, ahi. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer the question from Hilo? Um, yes, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kalmana. Okay, Kalmana. And your question? It's not a question. I just wanted to tell Derek and the boys they did a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Alice and Joanne. Okay. Who's that? Who's that? Alice and Joanne. Oh. oh. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Okay, thank you for calling from Kaumana, and we have another uh, caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from, and go ahead Chapel. with the question, please. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm from Hilo. Uh, what are you folks making right now? Uh, I just uh, turned the channel. I, I beg your pardon? Uh, what are you folks making right now? Uh, they're making the pig feet, uh, huli huli pig feet soup. Oh, I see. Is that la uya? Is that la uya? Do you call that la uya? What, what do you guys call it? We don't know what it really name for it, but we just call it like pork soup, bone soup. <laughs> because people call it uh, laouya. That look like it. That's fine. Yeah. The Filipino dish. Yeah, that's what you call it. Okay. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling from Hilo. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, the please? Outside. I am calling from Hilo. Yes. And Derek, do you folks do catering? Derek, do you do catering? No, we don't do catering, but um, we can do something on the side if we know friends and whatnot. Uh, you know, Derek, uh, I see the huli huli pig just came in, so maybe you can put that huli huli pig right on the counter there and show the people how to uh, shred it. Yeah. And uh, while you're doing that, we'll go ahead with the question. How, how does okay. that sound? That sounds good. <coughs> okay, uh, do we have any other callers? Yeah, we stay water. Okay, we have another caller, and uh, I guess we'll take this next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Uh, calling from Kiao. And what, what you guys just sent me? What was that called? It was a pig feet soup, actually. Yeah. And you have what another question. What else do you guys serve? Oh, make. Sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. What else do you guys make? Hey, make. Uh, what else did we make tonight? Yep. Uh, that's the only thing, but we're going to show you uh, the huli huli pig that just came off the um, the huli huli machine, and they're unraveling it there right now. And I think they're going to uh, start shredding it, and we're going to have a feast tonight. Where is you guys? You guys have a restaurant. Where is it located? Oh, the, uh, he does this. Uh, oh, what's the question? Uh, you don't have a restaurant, right? No, we yeah. don't have a restaurant. <laughs> we don't cater. We don't. We just do this for friends, and this is our hobby. So they'll do it right in your backyard if uh, <laughs> if you want. Okay. Okay, do you have another question? Do we have another caller? Uh, the pig. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, the pig will kind of shrivel, but uh, how long you in bacon? <laughs> <laughs> this pig was maybe cooked about 
six, seven hours, no? Because it was kind of windy today. But it would kind of shrink, yeah, the size is like, it's supposed to be like 90 pounds, but it might shrink down. Yeah. Well, it's fully cooked right through. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling from, I think that was from Kao. Uh, while they're shredding the pig, why don't you just show the, uh, show Derek uh, shredding the, the pig while we take the next uh, take uh, caller. So uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go yes, ahead with I'm the question, please? Kao. Yes. And it's uh, kind of a multi-question. Okay. Proposition here. Uh, I was curious as to what type of bearings that they're using on the shaft, and I noticed that they've mentioned they've put oil, and I was wondering what type of oil they actually used on the shaft, what type of oil was used <coughs> on the bearings, okay. and where did they obtain the stainless material from? Okay, also, Gary. the last and final question. Okay. If I can smell the Hooli pig cooking for the Super Bowl, <laughs> can I drop in for a bite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can drop in for the Hooli Hooli events we do. And then and what kind of oil do you use on the bear? It's regular Western oil, cooking oil. Regular cooking oil. Okay. And you probably can use any kind of cooking oil. As long as it ain't like motor oil or <laughs> <laughs> WD-40 or something, but the oil is a good factor on this thing. Okay. Does that answer the question? Uh, I was wondering if they used any specific type of oil on the roller bearings to keep from having flame up or the oil getting bad and seizing up the bearings. No. Derek? We just use regular cooking oil on the Bavit and regular bearings. Mm, that smells good. Okay, and all the material then is available locally uh, that? For, for getting the, uh, the whole assembly made. I never get that question. Oh, we didn't hear that question. Can you repeat that last question? All the material, the shaft materials, the plate oh. materials, the reduction gear assembly that they're using, the stand material, is all of that available locally or how much of it would have to be ordered from outside sources? I think locally you can get pretty much everything over here. So Derek but is going to make up the part list and everything yeah. and we're going to put it in our cookbook. So Some of the main rods I got them from Oahu and some of the shafts because I got a better price here on that side of the island. But it's costly for shipping long items here over. So, you probably can get it all locally, and the stainless steel sheets. Hey, does that answer the question? That sure does. I guess the best place to check would be some of the uh, local cheap metal shops that we have over here. I know there's some fine artisans dealing with uh, stainless steel work, as I can see what uh, they have here on the TV set. So, again, thank you for the complete demonstration, and uh, I'll be looking for the smell, if we can say it that way. <laughs> Aloha. Okay, well, thank you for calling. Mm -hmm. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yes, I'm calling from Hilo. Uh, we know that J and J are apart. Yes. Um, where are they located? Okay, Derek, where, where are you located? I'll let Jason answer that question. We're located on, in uh, 845 Yolani Street, right behind the old Dell's Farm and Supply. Oh, I see. You know why? You both make the oh, that bugger look good. <laughs> <laughs> are you both gonna eat them, or are you guys gonna take them home? <laughs> I think we'll save one Ziploc bag for you folks. <laughs> oh, I wish I had some over here. I feel hungry now when I look at this. If you come <laughs> down, you can have some. <laughs> <laughs> Just come on down. Oh, I, I could bring my 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 baggies. <laughs> oh, look at. This. Good, oh, delicious. Oh, it smells. <laughs> oh. I wish you had smell a vision because, oh, it smells oh, good from this smell side. My tea already. Okay, thank do you have you. any other questions? That's all. Okay, thank Bye. you very much. And Bye. I believe Bye. my friend Haruso Joe is on, so okay. go ahead. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Hi. Uh, this is uh, Derek Fell from Waimea. Oh, okay. 
as to the guys over there, uh, they did one good job. <laughs> yes, they watch his name. Uh, Derek know who he is already. <laughs> I know already. <laughs> <laughs> that was our teacher. Uh. He teaches us how to make huli huli and beef and whatnot. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, calling. And uh, <clears throat> we don't have any callers right now. We are coming to you live from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library. Oh, and uh, this evening we're oh, featuring J&J yeah. &J Auto Repairs yeah. and Sean's I Muffler and Brake Shop. Yeah. And we have with us this evening uh, Der uh, Derek Nakamoto, uh, Wesley Masuda, uh, Jason Hara, and uh, Sean Nakamoto. And uh, we, what we did for you this evening is to demonstrate the uh, huli huli pig, the way we do it here on the Big Island. And uh, if you have a question for Derek and his gang, uh, please give us a call. And we have two callers, so why don't we take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hey, Dr. Fuji. Oh, you're on, okay. to call you. <laughs> By the way, there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lakamoro. Uh, you know, you sewed the pig with uh, some kind of a string. What kind of string did you use? Then? Does it burn off when cooking? What, what kind of string, string do you use to sew the pig up? Just regular, not box. nylon string, but box string. Box string. And, and does uh, it give an off it flavor to me? While cooking. What was that? Does it burn off? Oh no, it doesn't burn. Oh, uh, okay. But it's, it's like <laughs> it's very interesting because in Honolulu we used to have a huli huli chicken, and then late, uh, lately we uh, um, a more uh, sophisticated uh, device. They call it a uh, rotisserie chicken, and it's similar to your, you know, your your method of making, and uh, you and you call yours huli huli pig. <laughs> you should put them a. Uh, uh, we call it, uh, put a fancy name and call them rotisserie pig. <laughs> 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 but uh, and, uh, Dr. Fuji, the, the, uh, that group that you brought on, although they were auto mechanics or whatever, but I think those guys are better cooks than a lot of the cooks that appeared on your program. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that's why I brought them on, Haruso Joe. <laughs> okay, I think that uh, we have another caller. Uh, thank you very much for calling Haruso Joe. And uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Hawaii Kai, uh, Oahu. Okay. I wanted to find out on the beef, what time he started the fire and uh, uh, how long he uh, had the beef on? Okay, how long did you have the fire on the, I think it was the beef? The beef was on, I would say, at least nine hours, yeah. Nine or ten hours. But you keep slicing off yeah, the cooked yeah. part, right? You just keep slicing, re-salting them, re-oiling them. And so how many slices do you make? That night we probably made about maybe nine slices. That was about how, how heavy the piece of beef was? Just under 50 pounds, I think, 40 something. So, what time you stay by getting on fire at, uh, at uh, you eat, you serve at 12 o'clock? What time you would put the beef on? Maybe four or five hours before. Okay. That would be, I guess, enough fish, fish and time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you for calling. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Uh, yes, I'm um, calling from Hilo. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know um, how old that pig was. How old the what was? The pig. The pig. Arnold, how old was the pig? <laughs> <laughs> three months? Four months? About three and a half months. Oh, I'm missing my pig this one. <laughs> 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 I, I didn't hear that. It must be funny. Everyone's laughing. <laughs> Maybe I can come down and sample, huh? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for calling. And uh, do we have another We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Oh, yeah. I'm from North Shore, Hawaii. 
From where? I'm wondering if you guys custom make those. We could buy them. That's I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Machine. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I was wondering if we could buy those uh, Huli Huli machine. The machine? Yes. Oh, where, 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 where can they... They, there's no place you can buy no. this machine, right, Gary? It's homemade. You have to fabricate. You gotta it. fabricate your own. You have to fabricate your own. Oh, uh, is there any places we can get somebody like an items we can buy? Well, maybe Derek might be taking bids. <laughs> <laughs> what I can do is you can call me later, or let Jack know, and I can um maybe work something out with you or somebody else I can find for make it for you. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Easier than Kalua pig. I got it. Do you have another question? That's it, sir. I, I want to get his phone number. Okay, uh, Derek, you want to give your phone number or you want to use I my phone number? <laughs> yeah, they call Jack and then. Okay, uh, maybe we, more easy. we can get the Elmo and uh, there. Uh, that's the way you can get a hold of me. Uh, and maybe we can switch the camera to the Elmo. And then we'll take the next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Um, Kanioi, I just wanted to know what recipes are the cookbook coming out in? I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. What recipes are the cookbook? Is the, what, what's the name of the cookbook and the recipes are Oh, what recipe is going to be in the cookbook? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have the recipe for the basting material for the, um, for the beef, and also we're going to have the recipe for the, um, the, uh, the, the, the pig feet soup. <laughs> the pig feet soup, yeah. And then I think I might be able to write down the ingredient for Derek's poke. So that'll be just in that section, but we have 14 more sessions this semester, so we're going to have a lot of other uh, recipes, plus all of our students in the classroom here are going to submit a recipe, so the uh, cookbook should be nice and fat. Okay. Does that answer thank the question? Yeah, thank you. Okay. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? So I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And Wesley, my friend, and I'd like to find out if he, uh, they rent that machine out. Okay. <laughs> Derek, uh, do you rent the machine out? Uh -huh. No, <laughs> not really. I don't rent machines out. I let them to just some good friends or whoever helped me. I just go over there and I cook for them. Because when I, I get together with Wesley, that's Super Bowl time, and maybe we go uh, have a party or something. What was that? We get together with Wesley, maybe Super Bowl time, and have a party. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling from Hilo. And I think we have another caller. No callers. So, does anybody in the classroom have a question? No one in the classroom has a question? Well, we're, what we're going to do is uh, uh, show what Sean's doing and uh, Derek's doing over there with the... Uh, a uh, huli huli pig and it looks like you can shred it right up and it almost looks like Kalua, Kalua pig there, right? Yeah. And uh, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194X, focus on agriculture. And if you would like to register for this class, there is still time. Uh, you have until uh, January 25th to register for this class, especially for those of you in the viewing audience. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, um, please? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? And um, I just want to say something to um, my dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Uncle. <laughs> hey, they said. <laughs> That's um, my boy. Is the head edible? The pig head? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to bring it home? <laughs> yeah. We'll bring it home for you tonight. <laughs> okay. You and Mom can eat it. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, thank you for calling. Goodbye. We have another, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Hi, Dr. Fuji. This is Mike from Kauai. Okay, Mike. And I just, it's more of a, a comment. You know, okay. if people are going to try to uh, build one of these huli huli machines, we've had one for years that we made out of 
an ice cream machine motor uh -huh. and a truck steering box. Ah. Side, side mount instead of straight mount. And it, it used to run at one revolution per minute instead of six. So, you know, there's lots of ways to skin a cat, you know, if you guys want to try to figure out how to do things. Can you share that with me? Share what? Uh, how you make your uh, huli huli machine? It was out of a, an old ice cream machine motor uh -huh. and side mounted instead of straight mount. And it went through a, a Dodge truck steering box. Oh. And just in the exact same kind of setup they got with the shafts and bearings and everything like that. But, you know, you know the reduction gear was in the steering box so we could run the, the ice cream motor. And that would turn everything at one revolution per minute. And, you know, we tried stopping it by hand. We woolly woolly pigs and uh, lamb and all kinds of things, and, you know, that works. So it's like some of these inventor types out there can, you know, I guess. How much would that machine cost, the one that you built? Well, uh, it was all out of, you know, the steering box came out of a junkyard and the ice cream machine motor came out of the attic because <laughs> nobody ever made ice cream anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, and I guess, you know, there's some low horsepower motors that, you know, electric motors that can be used, like, you know, Derek's thing is like top of the line, but um, I guess a little bit of experimenting and whatever you got left over in the garage kind of things can be, try to be used. Okay. Well, you know, if, if you want to uh, share that information with me, uh, uh, if you can send me a write-up on how you did it, uh, I can put it in our cookbook if you want. Sure. So uh, I'll get the I'll get the the fax number and everything when it comes back up on the screen again. Yeah, send it to me and uh, uh, give me your name and address and everything, and we'll put it in the cookbook. Okay. Okay. Sounds Great. good. Thank you. Thank you for calling from okay, Hawaii. Bye. And uh, we have time for one more call. So will the last caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hi, he calling from Hilo. Okay. And I was wondering for that sticky soup, is it possible to add other ingredients like onions or maybe squash? Okay, Derek, can you put other ingredients in there, in your soup? Yeah, you could probably put pretty much anything inside. Squash would be good. Onions, I don't know, potatoes, but practically anything you can use. Yes. Okay. Sounds good, thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for calling. And I think we've completely run out of time, and I think the students are just uh, waiting to dig into that hooli hooli pig. So I want to say thank you very much, J&J Auto Repair and Sean's Muffler and Brake Shop for uh, demonstrating the uh, hooli hooli uh, pig for us. And uh, we want to let you know that next Thursday night we're going to have Canoes Cafe and they're going to make uh, a lot of different oh, yeah. salad dressing for you and uh, share that uh, with you. Uh, so we hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening. This is Jack saying thank you for watching and good evening. Awesome. <laughs> 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 this is too